Hey, you guys, I'm Tank from Tank and the Vengas, and this is our small, small studio, studio session. session. Enjoy. Coming up on this episode of Small Studio Sessions, winners of the 2017 NPR's Tiny Desk Contest, Tank and the Bangas. Now we welcome Tank and the Bangas to WFYI's Small Studio. woman. I'm all vines and wild things. I'm all attitude. And pretty face, pretty face, pretty face. I'm all eight wall. I'm all ironing boards and extension cords. I'm all Canal Street and Lakefront. I'm all of these things. Daiquiri's and Dumais. I'm probably the only person that know how to pronounce Chapatulas. I'm so, I'm so, I'm very so pretty, so New Orleans. I'm all eight wall. I'm all daiquiris and pralines. Music Street. Things that I've learned. Things I'll never forget. I'm me, and that's all I'll need. Me. Me. In New Orleans. Me. In New on a porch and I say, hey cousin, when she's not even my cousin. I'm boo loving on the lake when it is dark and I have found my place. I found my place. I did. Me. with me and I'm in love 
I'm in third period, oh, well. the day was still made for me. We run some more and waiting on me. Fuck hate for me, fuck hate for me. Amy scare me, actually make me jealous. Cheryl is my best friend. Crying my boyfriend, gay is his father. But his love letters me sweeter than snowballs in the east. And freezy shoot all wrapped in one love letter. And a warm sweater in December, I am better, I'm better. I DK, whatever. whatever. Mondays I be trippin', my mama want me to wash the dishes while she makes my brother lazy and distant. I'm moving at 18! That's why what's in years later is the same routine, and I'm complaining, catching bugs like it's a brand new thing. I want everything and anything, um, the clothes in a basket or a hummy truck, my life is funny as well, like who's who that got, that's my luck, I didn't know, famous and blunt, rolling up blunt, turn down while everyone is busy, turn it up, Hey, man, everyone is busy, turn it up, everybody busy. I'm Tariana Tang Ball of Tank and the Bangers. I am Norman Spence of Tank and the Bangers. Hey, how you doing? I'm Josh. I'm with Tank and the Bangers too. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. That was an incredible performance, and it's an honor to meet you all. Thank you. Likewise, Likewise. Likewise. Thank you. Obviously, Public Radio has been a big part of your story. You won the Tiny yes, M- NPR Tiny Desk Contest. You're here with us today at Public Radio. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of Public Radio in introducing your mu- music to a larger audience? I think that it changed our lives, for sure. We were always doing this. We always were doing this. But it, everyone said that we just needed the right platform so that people could see what we do. And that's what NPR did for us. We didn't know that it would be so huge for us, but it really changed the direction of our lives in, in the best p- possible way. Yeah, it's Absolutely. And then, uh, like, about the public radio part, man, like... NPR specifically is 
It's like the underground central. I found out about so many new artists through mm-hmm. Tiny Dust. Or even saw a new side of so many artists. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Because you get to strip it on down. You strip and just it down. Listen and it's to like, nothing wait, but what they do. They and you it? get to see how they really feel about their music, how creative and how how they can really make it change into right. something else, man. The fun part was us actually stripping down this huge band into this small acoustic thing that we did over there. It was like a whole nother vibe, man. It really it was, was cool. Yeah. That was the laid back us for everybody that don't know. And everybody goes and sees that. I'm like, laid back, really? And then they that come and cool. see it and they're like, <gasps> oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, it's cool, right? No, no. You liked it? Yes. No? Yes. You're weird. Well, guess what? You too. You're weird too. Yeah, I think that's why we're all sitting together right now. Oh. They're laughing at us. They got cameras pointed at us because we're weird. And you all come from one of the most beautiful and culturally culturally rich places uh, in the world, New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, you <coughs> just said you from Baltimore. Oh, okay, yeah, but it's, Nobody it's, it's culturally cares. rich, and the, and the talent Nobody. up there is ridiculous. And shout Nobody out to Bimo. But um, as far as the culture goes, New Orleans got a lot of. Ask him how long he been in New Orleans. How long though? have you been in New Orleans? Ten years, and exactly. no, I ain't moving back. Right. See what I'm saying? I'm not moving back. So why he throws that out all the time? Because <laughs> I have to. Yeah, I love you, Baltimore. <laughs> he love it. Hey, that's his stomping you. grounds. That's ain't nothing wrong that's with my that. Hometown. But never forget who. Uh, who shaped you? Uh, Baltimore. Balt- Baltimore may have made you, but New Orleans shaped you. You're Tank is high. Tank, you Tank just... don't get high. No more. <laughs> 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 that, I'm sorry, that is a song from our upcoming album, Green Balloon. Which is Dropping available. May 3rd. May 3rd. <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> totally shameless. Shameless. Yeah, man. I'm sorry, Kyle. No, you're fine, man. Tank, you just performed this beautiful piece of poetry that captures the essence of this city in a profound and extraordinary way. Tell me what this city has given to you as musicians, New Orleans. Wow, it has given to you. It gave you originality, freedom, freedom. creativity. Spirit and drive. Art, spirit, performance, you know. Um, soul. I got a lot of creativity just watching cats on Frenchman Street, watching cats do their thing on the street, man. On the street? Like, more than even... Like, no, I mean, like, I really know. I'm saying, like, I got a lot Shout of Shout out to Ray. In, in Harbor like, Project. going to watch people do their things in clubs and stuff. I'd catch people on the street, but the people in the clubs used to always make me, like... How they do that? How they do that? And I always pay attention to like a lot of musicians and how they moved and how they grooved and everything like that. So it gave me a lot of that. And then the creativity part, it was just like, it was always there on the slick side. So it was just being open enough and and having people trust enough to allow me to use it and use it with them. Tank, same thing. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, you don't see that everywhere. People scared to do that everywhere else because you want to be cool. But in New Orleans, you're free. Bro, they, they got bring a, it hard. They got a spot right now in Even New when it's Orleans that be popping on Wednesday nights. And if you go over there on Wednesday nights, you'll see about it, a whole lot of talent, about bro. What you'll see. You'll see. That's a... what we did with Frenchmen and I identified. <laughs> oh, Don't even tell nobody. No, where real talk, the though, man. Real just, talk. If you go out, if you go out there, man, you'll see so much un unheard of talent, bro. So much raw potential and everything. Hit up my like inbox that, if you want to know where it's at. Hit up. I ain't telling everybody no more. And if you buy houses, you put up them we buy houses signs, we're not talking to you. <laughs> so I'm y'all joking. stupid, man. Y'all, y'all funny. A, a lot of the work we do at this station and radio and television is telling the story and the history of the city of Indianapolis. And Tank, you have a unique connection to this city. And this city formed you in, in a way from what I've read and, and heard in interviews. Do you want to talk about your connection to Indianapolis and how you happened to come here first? Well, people would think that, oh, you must have just started driving and never stopped. You know, like, who comes from New Orleans to Indianapolis? Actually, my family did. My Aunt Gloria came out here and my cousin Alexia, and they told us, you know, while we were going through, you know, basically escaping the storm, come up here. You know, we have housing for you and people that will treat you real kind. And we and we drove all the way up here with our grandparents and our family, and that's exactly what we got. Uh, we, we lived in a space where... Um, you know, they had a fully furnished apartment for all of us. And then there was this room that you go to at night where they're just full of clothes that people from Indianapolis just donated to us. And me and my sister would go there every night and just surf through all the clothes looking for clothes to wear because we obviously didn't have any. And um, I just met 
beautiful people. It reminded me, I was like, I need friends. I don't have any. So I need to put my personality right here because I need to, I need, I need to, I need friends. And um, and that's how I met so many people. They were at the show like last night. So just as much as they had an impact on me, I must have had something on them because, man. It was, that was just the most worst, best year of my life because I was able to meet so many people. You know, I mean, who wants to be separated from their home their senior year? But I needed it because without Indianapolis, I wouldn't be the artist I am. Because although New Orleans will open you up to all these things, in the public schools, you still feel like you want to blend in as much as you can just so someone won't pick on you. I didn't feel that here. I felt cool to be myself. You graduated from Pike High School, right? I did. Yeah. Core 40, yeah. Yes. <laughs> We're in a big old class. You don't know nothing. Shut up. <laughs> Were you making music during your time in Indianapolis? Or was you just? I was yeah. more poems. Poems? Because yeah. I was going through so much inside. I wrote a lot because, you know, I was so sad. I used to cry so much. You know. Shut up! You don't know anything. She still cries, y'all. She still cries. I didn't know your grandparents went up there with y'all. Thank God, man. Come on, I can't go nowhere without my mama and papa. They, up, my grandmother up. died here too. Mm. Yeah, my grandfather. Where'd it's you crazy. stay at, if you don't mind me asking? What part of town? Oh my God! The what apartment I, buildings. I know I stay. The crazy part is I, I can't even much think about it that much. I think it was Circle something because it was so long ago. Circle, Circle Center, Cypress something. Mm. But I know I was close to Pike High School. That's crazy. Oh, it wasn't Cover Bridge Apartments, It was, was Cover it? Bridge. Yeah. How you know? Yeah. What the hell going the, on with you? You live there right now. <laughs> <laughs> How do you right. know that? I'm in your old room. I'm no, a, no. What? Right no, that's where a lot of people were uh, uh, Cover placed bridge. when they oh, came up I here from I know it started Orleans. with a C. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I yeah. know it Shout started out with a C. Yeah. Shout out to Cover Bridge. Because they, they covered you. They, oh, they was a bridge over trouble waters. That was a blessed word you just did. They covered, yeah, they covered my entire family. And and right now, this idea of uh, the fate of displaced people is a huge political football, right? We hear about uh, people who've been displaced by economics, war, environmental disaster, uh, being turned into villains and blocked and banned and building walls, et cetera. What did going through that experience of being dis displaced from your home, what did, what did, how did that kind of shape you? And how do you view these issues now, having experienced that to some degree in your own life? Just that... You know, when people are escaping from home, they called us refugees a lot, and we weren't. We were literally, you know, people that was running to, to, to safety, but we were, you know, obviously Americans, and they try to separate that. And But what, but what's always first is that people should remember before American, before refugee, before evacuee is human, person, first. And that way you can take care of everyone and love them and treat them with the same care that you would, you know, someone that is supposedly American. You treat them human first. And that way we all can come together and, and take care of each other like we're supposed to when we are displaced. Before you all go, Tank, I want to ask about your lyrics, right, your incredible lyrics. You have this knack for taking these kind of simple, universal themes from pop culture, the Brady Bunch, shopping at Walmart, and weaving these... Uh, poetic tales that are intimate and complex. I'm curious if, if that's like a formula. You kind of like look for things to kind of, that everyone can kind of relate to and you, and yeah. you expand it or is this just all inspiration? It is part just regular oh, I found that interesting myself personally. I'm going to write about that. And the other half is I would love to talk about something that everybody does. Every To me, a lot of people go to Walmart, you know what I'm saying? Like um, that's, that's pretty universal to me and everyone has seen an ant before you know, and taking something so small and regular in the world and expounding on it and making like it cool. It. it all literally is part inspiration, part, you know, purposefully looking for something that is a part of everyday life. Yeah, man.